Okay, so this is the first in my new and exciting series of videos explaining how to get the most marks out of your assessed practicals. And the video I'm going to do now is all about making the correct and accurate observations, which is something a lot of people struggle with. Uh, the way I'm going to do it is by pointing out the common mistakes that pupils always make when performing observations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to perform four experiments and I'm going to make four sets of observations. But I'm going to do it badly. I'm going to deliberately make mistakes. And what I'd like you to do is to get a pen and paper. So if you haven't got one already, stop the video now and go get a pen and paper. And for each experiment, I'd like you to try and spot the mistakes I'm making. And each time you do, just jot it down on your paper. What I'll then do is I'll do the experiments again and I'll make the correct observations and I'll point out the mistakes I've made. So you can check whether you spotted uh, what not to do basically. And like I say, these are all the common mistakes which people make all the time. So, experiment number one. And I'm not going to talk about the chemistry of this, so don't worry about what's happening or why. All I want you to focus on uh, for now is the observations. So experiment one. Okay, so I start out with a white solid, and ooh. okay, so that's uh, producing a loud noise, and I'd say that is giving off a gas. Look, you can quite clearly see there's a gas being given off, probably carbon dioxide, and I can see that gas there. Okay, that's experiment one. Uh, experiment two, I've started off with a blue solution, and if you can see this on the video, and as I move a chemical, I get a blue precipitate. I can get as close as I can. Okay. Uh, experiment three. Here again, I have a clear solution, and I'm going to add to that another clear solution. And I'm going to give this one a shake. So bear with me. <laughs> and leave it for a second oh and I would say that is forming uh, uh, my observation is it's an orangey reddish solution is formed there orangey red okay that's experiment three and experiment four again I start with a clear solution Uh, my observation is that uh, it has changed the to the colour blue. That's my observation there. Okay, so that's my four experiments. Uh, let's go back and, and see basically what I did wrong. So I'll do the first one again. I said before that I saw a gas being given off. Well, that's not quite true, is it? You can't see a gas, especially carbon dioxide and oxygen, which are pretty much the only gases you'll be dealing with. Um, they're, they're colourless. They're colourless gases. So how could I possibly see them? Unless I have some kind of you know, gamma ray vision which can you know, zoom in on them, then I'm not going to be able to see the gas given off. What I did see was the fizzing, which was caused by the gas. So that's what you need to say. Fizzing, bubbling, or if you want to be really fancy, effervescence. Spell E double -F, F, not E V. Otherwise, that would be Evanescence, which is a really crappy emo band. Also, I didn't think to feel it. Now, that's actually a little bit warm there. So whenever you do an experiment, uh, just have a little feel of it and see if it's warmer or, or colder. And obviously, if it is warmer, that means you had an exothermic reaction. 
and if the temperature dropped and it got colder, you must have had an endothermic reaction. Let's do the second one again. So blue solution. And I said I got a blue precipitate. Now, that's not actually correct. What I've got there is a white precipitate in a blue solution. And this is probably the most common mistake made by pupils. You've got to distinguish between the solid, the precipitate, and the solution. Okay, A white precipitate in a blue solution. I'm not sure if you can make that out on the camera, but it is white. Okay, So you've really got to be careful for that one. For the third one, I won't do this again. I'll just uh, show you the original. Uh, now, I said it was uh, orangey-reddy colour. Now, what's orangey-red? That's what examiners call sitting on the fence, and you will never get a mark for that, ever. Um, if you say two colours, even if one of them is the right colour, you know, I would say that is orange, you won't get the mark, okay? Otherwise, you could say orangey-reddy, bluey-greeny, blacky, purpley, whitey, and then you definitely get the mark. So you can't do it. Pick a colour, stick with it, and if you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Whatever you do, do not say two colours. You can say a shade of colour, like deep blue, although well, you wouldn't really need to, but don't ever say more than one. I've also missed out the fact that this has actually got two layers, hasn't it? Okay, we've got a polar layer and a non-polar layer, so I'd have to give the colour of both layers as well. And don't forget to say which layer is on top. Okay? And finally... Again, I'll just show you what I did before. I said a blue colour was made. Um, yes, it is a blue colour, but it's, I haven't said it was a precipitate or a solid. Okay, you've got to specify whether it's a solution or a solid precipitate. Okay. And one extra little thing I just wanted to talk about. If I show you this bottle here, this bottle is a clear solution. A lot of people think if it has a colour, that means it's not clear. If it has no colour, like this bottle, this is a clear, because you can see through it, colourless solution. This is a coloured solution, obviously it's blue, but this is still clear. Look, I can see my fingers through the back of it. So if you can see through a solution, that means it is clear. And it's basically because it doesn't have little bits of solid floating about in it. But... Um, whether it has a colour or not, that is colourless. So there is a difference between clear and colourless, and you would be expected to know that in an exam as well. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, have a good day.